and welcome to Poudre School District's Living History. I will be your host, Valerie Heisem, and our guests today are Mr. and Mrs. Linton and Mrs. McGraw. How are you guys doing today? We're doing fine, Just thank fine. you. Poudre School District's Living History is about the people who the schools are named after, for instance, for instance Linton and McGraw Elementary. Um, um, okay, uh, how did you feel when the school was named for you? Well, pretty excited. I woke up and was reading the paper in the morning and all of a sudden on this one little article about the school board news, I heard that, or read that our, um, our name had been chosen to put on the new school that opened in 1989. And I yelled for Wayne. He was out in the other room and he came running in. He thought something was wrong. And we were very, very honored. I guess that's about the same way. I read about it in the paper and I looked at it. I said, I can't believe this. I said, Fum, would you come look at this paper and read uh -oh. it and see what it says? And so he read it to me. I said, that's what I saw. I couldn't believe it. I, I was just flabbergasted. Why do you think you were chosen to have your name put on that school? I really don't know. When I go over to McGraw, the kids ask me that. How did you get this school named after you? And I said, I really don't know because I was so surprised. I didn't know it was in the works and the planning or anything. It just happened. So I don't know. I guess you'd have to ask somebody else how they, how they decided. I think that maybe there's a committee that uh, has a number of names and um, they keep their ear to the ground and listen to what people have to say. And I think that uh, we were lucky enough to have many, many ex-students and current students and parents, parents and co-workers, uh, co -workers, staff members, people like that said, hey, you're going to build a new building, why don't you put that name on it? But uh, we're, we're like Burl. We, we didn't know for sure how we rated that. So it's a very humbling experience as well as being an exciting experience when you stop to think of all of the people that they might have picked and picked you. Um, do you visit that, do you visit Linton Elementary often? Uh, we have been volunteering out there until this year and I had a little problem so we haven't been out there much this year but we still go out for music programs and special times. I usually read the words for the spelling bee and do read aloud and whenever invited I try hard <laughs> to go if it works out with my job. How, like back then, were the children different from how they are now in clothing, music, activities? Well, I, I started teaching in 1950 and at that point in time why it wasn't a written dress code, but there was an understood dress code. That is that kids would come to school dressed decently. Uh, they didn't have to have on their Sunday go to meet and clothes, but they had to have their shirt tails tucked in or blouse tucked in. Their hair had to be combed neatly. Um, their slacks, or I guess we didn't have slacks in those days. Girls, girls were didn't. expected to wear dresses or skirts and the boys were expected to wear trousers or jeans. Um, Same way with teachers. They were the teachers, the uh, female teachers were not allowed to wear pants. And the men were expected to wear shirts and ties and coats unless they were teaching physical education or shop classes. So it, it was different and the kids looked different and I don't know whether that had that much to do with their behavior but uh, they may have behaved a little bit better because they didn't have off, sawed off shorts or sawed uh, off <laughs> <laughs> or mini skirts or something like that. I started teaching in uh, 1965 and things were a little different from Even then, then, but not that much. I started out at Wellington Junior High 
and uh, we had a lot of farm kids, but they still uh, dressed differently than today. Um, do you have any memories of Fort Collins that, that just really interested you? I think one of the things that in raising our family here, we never locked our house, we never locked our car. In fact, we couldn't even find a key to our house when we had to sell it. We had to go down and have somebody <laughs> make a key. Uh, the kids could ride anywhere in town on their bicycles and uh, it was safe. And I think that the growth factor has been the biggest change and the traffic now <laughs> to yeah. get across town. We live out just off of, uh, just south of Prospect, and at that time we were the southern part of the city. Now we're now known as the northern part of the city. Um, do you, like, keep in touch with anybody, like, at Linton and McGraw Elementary? Yes. Yeah. In our visits. We In our, yeah, yeah, our visits. And you know, various meetings or something like that, too. There's a retired group. It's Pooter Retired School Employees Association. And each month we get together, and so we are with at least 100 of our friends who went, who are about our age or maybe a little bit younger. Uh, and I think that we keep up with what's going on in the school district that way. Um, I find an excuse each year to stop at the schools where I was, the old Lincoln and the, at, and at Levens. I work in the Larimer County District Attorney's Office as a juvenile coordinator, <clears throat> and uh, so I <laughs> still work with the schools with first-time offenders who get in trouble and all. So uh, I stay in contact with people in the schools. Has like the occupation for girls changed since when like your schools opened and back then? I, do you want to answer that? Well, yes, it really has. Uh, when our daughter was uh, in high school here at Fort Collins High School, they began bringing girls into sports into the schools. And um, <laughs> there's quite a compar comparison complete between the high school girls basketball teams then and now it's become pretty sophisticated. Mm -hmm. And also they are given more advantages and opportunities in the career field now. It's opened up that way. Like at your school, like are there cer only certain jobs back then that the women and men could take? At the school itself? Yeah, back then, when it first opened. I don't know, you mean? The, first, the first year that I taught, I was a cheerleader sponsor. <laughs> 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 I think it was one of those things that nobody else wanted, and somebody said, Mr. Linton's brand new, go ask him. I didn't know that. <laughs> yes, I was. That's why you gave uh, me that job when I was yes, at Plymouth. That's right. That's right. <laughs> All 120 uh -huh. of them. <laughs> And uh, that's a, Mrs. McGraw <laughs> can tell you about how cheerleading got started in junior highs. Well, by, <laughs> by popular demand. That's right. <laughs> and we felt that tryouts were not a, an option at that time because the uh, girls all wanted to be cheerleaders, so they had to sign up, and we had all these different groups, and they chose their uniforms, <laughs> and we had to schedule when they would, when they would cheer, and how they would get. Oh, <laughs> it was a nightmare, yeah. but they all <coughs> had an experience, and uh, I thought that was very healthy, because they wanted to try it, try it. If they like it, they could go on in high school and try out. But if they didn't, at least they'd had that opportunity. I wish that uh, we were back in the days when boys would also want to be cheerleaders. Uh, I think that maybe it's coming back a little bit, but uh, there for a long, long time it was strictly girls, and maybe that was because girls were not that involved in, in athletics at that time. But uh, it gave another group of kids an opportunity to be involved in an extracurricular activity, and I think that that was always very, very important. Uh, for these youngsters. Um, I don't know, in, uh, in 
in Olander, are there any uh, activities that uh, girls are involved in now that historically they have not been? Um, well, there's a girls' softball team that just is going out, and um, each year through Poudre School District, the, there can be girls that can just sign up to play a certain sport they want so they can play basketball and learn about it. They can play softball and get on a team and play it. And so they can play mostly all the sports now. They just, they still don't play football and things. They just play everything else now. Good. When you were in high school, did you have anything that you really wanted to grow up and be? Um, <laughs> when I was in high school, the war had started, Second World War, and like so many other guys, when it started, I was 16 years old, so I went down and tried to enlist and found out that I needed some surgery that I didn't even realize that I needed, so I was turned down by the Air Force and I was turned down by the Navy. And a Navy recruiter said, just wait and the Army will draft you. So that's what I did. So I went into the Army and was overseas for about 15 months. And when I came home, I, I went on to college then. But uh, getting to Fort Collins, when I first started teaching here, we had one high school, one junior high school, and four elementary buildings. So everybody knew everybody else, less than 15,000 people. And uh, now it's 115,000 plus. <laughs> I always wanted to be a teacher. I thought I was in Future Teachers of America, extracurricular club at East High in Denver, and uh, that was what I always wanted to be. I never did say I wanted to be a principal, though. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that was oh. not my goal in life. But I at one time wanted to be a pharmacist. But the principal at my high school, I li always went through very small town high schools or schools. And the principal was a very good friend of the family. And he said, you're not going to be a pharmacist, you're going to be a teacher. And he took me down to Greeley uh. and showed me the campus. And so I decided to, that was it. <laughs> have you, during life, have you fulfilled like your dream that you wanted to fulfill? Yes, I uh, came here to teach and met and married Wayne. Had three wonderful children that went through the school systems. And uh, in the last, well, it took 17 years off to raise the family. And then I went back to teaching. And I think that those were wonderful years. I really enjoyed, I had kindergarten and they were <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. In fact, our daughter, our youngest child, when she was in uh, at Poudre High School, she did an internship with Mrs. Linton in the kindergarten because uh, she wanted to be a teacher, but she's uh, a ranch wife. <laughs> so, <laughs> but she did a lot of teaching with those two girls, I'm yes, sure. Yes, she did. So uh, and I'd say yes. I I think uh, had a wonderful life. Uh, my husband has a building named after him. <laughs> at CSU, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so we're a two-building uh, family, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and that was quite an honor for him, and mm. uh, we're all very proud of him. So we've, we've had a wonderful life, and our children all went through Poudre School District, and uh, they're all ranchers at this time. And both of those bu buildings are richly deserved. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. They really are. Uh, I never did answer your question, I guess. I went to a very small college and I got out of the army. In the back of my mind, I thought that maybe I'd like to be, go into the ministry. But after being there for a couple of years, I thought that maybe uh, I could be as good a minister as some of them and not as good as some of the rest. But if you needed a call, why well, I certainly hadn't had that. <laughs> and uh, I chose teaching then and never ever regretted it. I uh, came here and taught for 10 years, then uh, was an assistant principal slash counselor, toughest job in the world. 
one day, and this was back in the 50s, early 60s, and the biggest problems we had in school were kids running in the halls and chewing gum and uh, whispering. <laughs> and if a kid uh, did something much worse than that, why, he knew he was going to get a swat from the assistant principal. So as the assistant principal, on any given day, if a kid had misbehaved to that point, why, I'd give him a swat. Then the next day as a counselor, I'd put my arm around him and say, hey, pal, is there anything I can do for you? <laughs> That was not an easy job. But he'd say, not a swat, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and in those days, if a kid did misbehave to that point, why, they knew what they had coming, and they took it, and it didn't happen again in nine cases out of ten. And the parents were supportive. When they'd get home, they'd usually get in trouble uh, there, yes. too. <laughs> well, how are you spending, like, your time now? Well, we do quite a little bit of volunteering. One of us does quite a little bit of golfing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have a place up in the mountains, so we uh, go up there in the summertime and like to hunt and fish and, and hike and just enjoy life. Time goes very fast, and we haven't had any trouble filling it up. When we first retired, uh, we were part of the VIPS organization, as was Burl. Um, and we volunteered at Shirley at Irish, and I volunteered at Juan Fuyana and Putnam, helping out. And then when Linton was built, why we, as Shirley said, volunteered there until this year. Um, I belong to a Kiwanis organization, and they do a great deal for youngsters, uh, the Youth Services Committee. As a matter of fact, three of the schools in our district, uh, we sponsor pizza parties for the kids who improve their grades or maintain their grades and stay out of difficulty. Um, so I'm involved in that as well. And we do more in church than we used to. As I say, I'm still working <laughs> at the uh, Larimer County District Attorney's Office. I'm also uh, chairperson of the Poudre Valley Health System Board which is the hospital and its other entities on the Healthier Communities Coalition Board, the Mental Health uh, Advisory Steering Committee where we're trying to figure out social services and mental health, and I'm still on the VIPS board. Yeah. <laughs> I have to die to get off of that, uh -huh. so I said I'm not ready quite yet. <laughs> so, um, let's see, on the uh, CSU Development Council, and uh, try to do, well, work at church too, and so uh, keep busy, but that's good. Yeah. <laughs> Beats the alternative, and my grandchildren know never to tell me that they're bored, <laughs> uh -huh. because that is not a word that I will accept. <laughs> it's the people who retire and sit and watch the tube that <laughs> are not enjoying retirement. It's the people that are active that really do enjoy retirement. If you can be working for somebody else, helping somebody else. It makes a big, big difference. Well, is there anything that you would have just loved to do right now that you really can't anymore? Well, my volunteering has had to be cut back uh, to a certain extent, but I still do it whenever I can. I think there's always something that you'd like to do that you don't have time to do or don't take the time to do. And that's a very small, thin line, but uh, the things that you like to do most, you'll find time to do. I can't think of anything that I set my priorities. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And um, Gotta have sure a little the time family for fun. is there. <laughs> that's right. Well, that's good. Well, do you have anything that you that you brought to show, or <laughs> we've got a couple? <laughs> we've got a couple of books out in, uh, in the car that we chose not to bring in, uh, and we'll share them with you after this is over. We I, we didn't know how you'd be able to zoom in on them or anything like that, <laughs> but uh, books that our staff made for us when we got ready to retire and uh, some nice thank yous in there and things like that. 
In fact, your teacher, Mrs. Wink, and I were both uh, honored at the uh, uh, Teachers Award Foundation mm -hmm. and uh, on the same night. And I still have that scrapbook. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, oh, go ahead. I think that one of the things that I did while I was teaching, while I was the uh, first few years that I was principal, uh, I was, okay, president of the Colorado <laughs> Education Association, and it's 20,000 members. And that was a thrill for me. However, at a banquet, they introduced my family. And my daughter stood up. She was, what, about seven years old, and I hadn't realized how much time I had not been at home. And she said, who's that man? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Did you get the message? <laughs> yes, I did. I certainly did. Okay. Oh. <laughs> well, are you enjoying right now, like, just living, being lazy? <laughs> <laughs> have you had time to be lazy yet, Merle? <laughs> I get real grumpy if I don't have time to read, because uh -huh. I love to yes. read. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. like yeah. we're, we're enjoying ourselves. Uh, we get to take a couple of nice trips each year, and uh, we look forward to that. And we have five grandchildren, five step-grandchildren, and four step-great-grandchildren, and we enjoy spending time with all of them. <laughs> so We make quite a crew when we all get together. Mm, yes. <laughs> we only have four grandchildren. <laughs> 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 get busy here. Oh. Well, you're oh. a few years behind as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, um, how have you liked living in Fort Collins your, your, through your years? Well, I came here to teach in 1951, and we were married, and Wayne had an opportunity to go to California uh, to become a principal out there for twice the salary. Mm -hmm. By the way, the salary was $2,500 a year at that <coughs> time. And um, uh, we both looked at each other and we said, we don't like California, we don't want to live there. So we came back here at our little meager salary and made our lives here, didn't ever want to move and wanted our children to be raised here. I never regretted having made that, that decision. Well, we, you know, my husband played uh, professional football with the Detroit Lions, so we were in Detroit one year off season and that was enough. So we lived here off season and then go back when he played there. Then he was offered a job to coach with the Pittsburgh Steelers, and we went back there for four years and uh, came back to Fort Collins. I was raised in Denver, and he was raised in Paonia, Colorado. So Colorado was our home, and Fort Collins in Colorado is our home. <laughs> and I think your family is a lot like ours. We have our children did not want to be out of Colorado. <laughs> right. They're all back <laughs> here, and we're fortunate they are. That's good. So you all have your children and everything mm -hmm. close to you. Mm -hmm. Well, I thank you for coming. I really enjoyed learning about Linton and McGraw Elementary. It was very fun. Thank you. Thank we you. enjoyed thank it. Thank you. We enjoyed it. Thanks for asking us. You're welcome. <laughs>